Hello, welcome back to GOT. Today we're going to talk about the Z Pulse 7 once again and its new multitasking feature. And we're going to compare it to some of the others. Let's go. We got the Vivo X Fold 5, Samsung Z Fold 7, and the R Magic V3, which will soon be the V5 as soon as it arrives. What's really nice about the size of these phones is you have two full size apps on either side and you can work them in combination together. And in doing so, they both work as full apps, which is really nice. I like to do a Bible study and do research sometimes using Chat GPT to help me out. So that's what I got lined up here. Now, on all of them, you can actually also add a third app, and we'll do one at a time. Let's go ahead and just open up. I want to know what the weather is at the moment. You can open up weather, and what that one did was I actually took over the space because I didn't do it right. right. So if you don't want it to take over the space, all you do is you take and tap on it. Now I got a floater, which is really nice. And we'll jump over here to the arm at B3 because it's very similar. You take this one. Yeah, what I'm going to use a floater. Let's just open up Edge as a floater. Now Edge is a floater. So you can float it and you can do anything you want. And you can shrink them down and notice they both go to the side and they will fade away. So on the Samsung, it's a little bit different. You can actually still pull the app here from the sidebar, just like you do the others. You can take it here. But if you tap it and let's just go ahead and tap why not the play store it'll jump right over top everything and it'll take over the screen that's not exactly what i intended it to do so let's go ahead and go back to my paired apps here and we'll try that again this time we'll go ahead and take the app and what we're we doing the play store and we'll take it and drag it there now it's in the center now it's a floater like the other two and you could take this and you can shrink it down. And notice what it did. It went wherever it decided to go. I don't know how it picks its location, but it just seems to go randomly somewhere. I think it might be the last place you left a shrunk down app. But anyway, you have to manually put it to the side or put it out of the way wherever you want to do. And you notice it will not fade. I don't like that. But anyway, let's go back to adding another one. Let's just add my gallery. Okay, there's my gallery now. It's a floater and I can shrink it and it adds to the stack here. Over here, it does the same thing. If you want to add, let's just add YouTube as a floater and it'll do the same thing and we'll shrink it down. And now it's stacked. When you do the same thing here on a Samsung, you can do the same thing. Let's see, as YouTube, yeah. But you got to drag it. You can't tap it because it'll take its space. Now, you can take this one and we'll shrink it down. Now it's stacked. So now you got stacked apps. So if you touch this, you can see the full app here on the Vivo, on the R Magic, same thing. They're stacked, you can see them right there. And on the Samsung, when you press it, they stack out this way and you just have to know your icons, which most of us do. So there's a different way of doing things on each of them. I do prefer these other two in the way they do it over Samsung. Now you could do several apps and you could do it different ways like here, if you long press and pull up from the bottom, let's go ahead and add, I don't know, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and add the weather app. Let's tap on it. From the bar, it goes full screen there. And that was not expected. So let's go back to my shared apps here. If you can go from the bottom dock here, let's go ahead and grab my mail app. You can drag it and you can make it a floater here too. And and let's shrink it down. Now over here you can do the same thing. You can grab and let's just do the mail app and we can drag it up here and let's shrink it down. And then over here, you can do the same thing. The bar's already there. I guess I don't have it set up to auto hide. If you press it, it'll take over the screen. Same with the R Magic V3. So what you want to do is go back here. If you take it, you can drag it and put it right there. And now it's shrunk down. And as you can see on these, again, they're listed out. And on the Samsung, it's three. Now, I'm not going to add any more apps to that tray. You can add several. I've done up to five and, and quit. I don't see why I would need any more than five there. But there you have it. You've got the stack apps on the side. So And that's how you can get three on the screen. Now, on the Samsung, you can actually do more than that. You can grab another app. And let's do the Internet app here. You can take it, and you can actually split the screen. So now you have three there. And if you open up one of these, you have four on the screen, four apps. Now, why you won't want four apps on the screen, I don't know. Let's see if you can go ahead and open up another one here. There's another floater. There's five and then six. So you can have a bunch of floaters on the screen. You can have all these apps open at once. But do they really do you any good? 
not really. They're just all in the way of each other. So you want to shrink those to down, shrink it down. So this is okay. You can you got three apps that you can work with. Okay, that's that's fine and dandy if that's the way you want to do it. And what's nice is being a little bit larger screen than its previous model. It does work a little bit better, but I don't really care for this. Now on the Honor Magic V3, the most you can have really is three open at a time. And that's these two with the floater. There's no other way around it. That's it. Let me show you here. Let's go ahead and see if we can open up something else like Edge here. You know, it won't go down here. It won't go anywhere. You cannot split. You can't do like Samsung. All you can do is replace. Now on the BOX 5, it's a little bit different. It's really cool. You go from corner here and you just swipe up and you go in this thing called Workbench mode. And Workbench will take five apps actually and open them up all together so you've got your background apps here and you can actually work on this one fully and then if you want to switch to another one you could do this and you can actually play an app in the background i got the audio turned down so when you go back here and you're doing your thing notice how it's still playing in the background so if you want to add music in the background and watch it or control it real easy it's right there you can switch from any app you want just that quick that simple I really like this way better because working with the app on pretty much a full screen is nice. One thing they could have done differently on this workbench is not have so much wasted space. See this? If you look at it, there's a lot of wasted space in there, which they didn't need to waste. I think they could have done a little bit better with this. But I do like it the way it is because I do like the nearly full screen that you get when you're operating with a focused app. So it does utilize the larger screen very well. Now that's the three phones with multitasking, but I did promise there's an extra feature here on the Z Fold. It's not a big deal, but check it out. Now you can only do it with two apps open. So example, I've got two apps open here, and let's say I take this one, and I can actually go all the way to a 90-10 split. So what that means is, see how this is more of a full screen, and you can go here, you can switch back and forth the apps. So that's kind of nice. That's really fast. That's very similar to what we got going on here, where you can switch really fast going back and forth. Now, real quickly, before you OnePlus fans or you Oppo Find In fans scream at me, yes, the OnePlus Open does the same thing. If you look here, I've got three apps open, actually. You can do three full-size apps open at the same time. And what's really nice about this is if you take and expand all apps to a full screen size, go ahead and expand it. See how it does the same thing? It does the same kind of split back and forth. So you can see where Samsung got it from. Now you can actually take the third app and see how it's already full screen. So you can do the same thing here, except it's kind of better because you go full screen on any of them all at once. Now the touching can become kind of hit and miss and sometimes you might have a mess up, but still that's a really good feature on the OnePlus Open and the Oppo Find N5. And we actually had thought that maybe that's where Samsung was going with this. And who knows, maybe at time they will allow that third app down at the bottom. Yes, and one more thing, because I know the OnePlus Open and the Oppo folks will say, you can actually go with four fingers and do this and open them all up at the same time. See right there, they're all on the screen at the same time. Now, if you take and shrink it down, if you take this one, and instead of going full size, they're all three on the side as well. So you could do it this way too. So you got a lot of options. And you can do your fingers here and get all three all on the screen at the same time. And you can work all three apps fully side by side this way, which is really nice. So that's a great feature on the OnePlus Open or the Opal Find In, which might be a little better on the Opal because you have a little bit larger screen. Matter of fact, it's larger than the rest of these. But I think personally, the more apps you put on the screen at the same time, the smaller they get, the harder it is for my old eyes to read. So I do prefer the way Bebel has it set up on the X Fold 5. Now it's time to hear from you. What do you think about multitasking? Which one do you prefer? What do you think of this new fab fancy feature with Samsung allowing you to just do nearly a full page and swap back and forth like this? Is that a great addition to the multitasking? Make sure to comment and tell me what you think. Now I'm going to continue to do more re reviewing and testing of the Z Fold 7 before I come out with my final review. So you want to stick to the channel because there's going to be lots of other small snippets along the way showing you different features and how they work compared to the others. And then down the road, I'll do a full comparison against each individual 
foldable. Let me know again down in the comments, what do you want to see tested on these different phones? And even if there's a specific way you want me to test, let me know. If you think about getting a Z Fold 7 soon, check out this video on how to set it up. And don't forget to like and subscribe because I've got a lot more content coming out for you. Until next time, have a wonderful day and God bless.